Hi everyone! Happy new moon in Cancer. Um, what a night. What a night. What a life. What a world. Oh, so, it took me a minute, honestly, um, to... find the words <laughs> to say tonight and I'm still struggling um because I feel like this past weekend um was really devastating um on a collective level hi wild Riki LA I'm so glad you're here um and I was like how can I best heal what can I say and, um, Cancer, let's start off with the sign, the zodiac sign, Cancer, the crab. Um, it always makes me think of my cat. I have a full red Persian cat, little smushy face, and, um, she found me, and that's a whole other story, but I don't know, right? We just, like, need to come together in community. I can't wait to open the circle and start channeling, because I know that's where all the wisdom's gonna come from. Um... But yeah, like, I, so yeah, my cat, my cat is, um, I call it the sign of the crab. She's a little baby crab. She's a cancer. Uh, her birthday is on July 15th. She'll be 16 and she's a little Persian cat with a little grumpy face. And I feel like that is how pop culture kind of can depict cancer. That because, but cancer is so much more than just... Well, here's the thing. Cancer is emotions, right? Um, all of the water signs are really good at tapping in to their emotions and emoting. Um, and that kind of has been demonized or like seen as weak when you're too emotional. But really, um, emotions harnessed are the most powerful thing in the world. They're more powerful than thoughts. They're where manifestation truly begins. Um, and so, and the only way to really um, work with emotions is to feel them. And it's difficult because it's not something that's revered in our society. Hey, Allison, how are you, girl? Um, it's not. It's not revered. It's it's become a little bit more accepted, I would say, on a surface level. But the whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps thing, which is kind of, you know, the patriarchy <laughs> or like that toxicness of like our, our society that we've built up into this, like, it's based on achievement. Um, but at the end of the day, like, everything you manifest, everything, every decision you make, um, the best place to make it from is from a place where you're linking into your inner wisdom, your emotions, how you're feeling. When you walk into a room, if your stomach drops, do you want to walk into that room again? You want to leave, you know what I mean? Without your emotions, um, life would be meaningless. So I guess what I want to say before we start the tarot card reading is whatever you're feeling, um, especially with, you know, current events that are unfolding, I see you and I want you to feel the emotions even if you, I mean, I struggle with knowing what to say on social media sometimes and I, um, but yeah, I'm feeling deeply. <laughs> I'm an empath. And so I just want to say I see you, and I'm sending you guys so much love, and I am in this with you as your sister. I stand in solidarity with women, and, and yeah. And I'm sure if you've watched my videos for a while, like, you could probably read between the lines there, um, but yeah, I'm feeling a lot of feelings, so I just want to say... Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I feel so much. I have Scorpio moon, I have Scorpio all over my chart, I have some Pisces, and um, this new moon happens to be conjunct um, with something that's not talked about a lot in astrology. Um, it's conjunct with um, black moon Lilith um, and the asteroid Lilith, and that kind of um, archetype Lilith was um, Adam's first wife in the Bible who refused to be um, 
subservient to him. <laughs> and she, you might not be familiar with her, but yeah, definitely that's a deep dive to go down. And so this and then Cancer, uh, the sign Cancer, is the mother of the Zodiac. So there's so much divine feminine energy pouring in to our universe. And um, it's, it's really interesting. And I don't mean just like, this is like the primordial mother. This is like going back to the roots of um, goddesses and... Um, so I just like hope you feel held by the goddess tonight however you see that divine feminine energy um, and and know that there's that kind of cosmic support here and at play for you <laughs> I feel like I could have worn that better but thank you for the hearts I appreciate it so yeah cancer is a water sign um, it's a cardinal water sign, so it's marking the start of summer season, which is what the cardinal signs do. Um, they mark the start, starts of the four seasons. Um, and yeah, so we're going to dive into that tonight. And again, water signs are all about their emotions. So feeling how you feel is really important in the healing process. What I will say is somebody who um, has taken like, a spiritual path is that the quicker you can move the the more you can feel the more you allow a flow to happen so if you don't the less of your emotions that you repress the more you allow yourself to feel the quicker you can move through that process um, but even with that being said it's still not always like a this kind of process. So tonight, um, one thing that I have been seeing a lot of people saying is like, meet yourself where you're at now. Um, because really that's where your power is and meet others where they're at now too. So um, tonight is about listening to your own inner wisdom though. Um, so I feel like even though I'm going to talk and we're going to do a reading, that's something important to do, to listen to what your heart is saying, what your feelings are saying, um, and then to do that with others as well, because everybody has this story, and I think listening is going to be required. Um, it's a give and take. So that's my two cents. Um, take it or leave it, whatever resonates. Um, there are some crystals I would recommend working with before I open the circle. Angelite. Angelite may be your best friend this new moon. This is what it looks like. It's like a milky blue. And this is going to connect you to the angelic realm. Um, it's just super emotionally comforting. If you need a little extra comfort, this one is one that I highly recommend. And I kind of was going through my crystals tonight, seeing what called to me, and Angelite was definitely one of them. So... Um, if you have it, work with it. If not, no worries. I have it on my altar, um, and I'll include it in my picture of the card so that you can work with its energy, too. Um, another great one for connecting with divine feminine energy is malachite. Um, this beautiful green crystal. You can see, I don't know if my camera is going to do it justice, it's not, but those lines, it's a gorgeous crystal and it's all about divine, healing the divine feminine. So we're definitely tapping into, um, to that tonight. So Malachite is another great one to work with. Amos and I, I felt really called to, sh um, to show you this. It's a little wand actually, and I put a rose sticker on it, um, during a ritual back in the day um and uh but amazonite is for integrity and i feel like um honesty is required when you are feeling your feelings like um because you you have to feel what you're really feeling and not what others expect you to feel um and so i feel like this is just a really good stone to work with um this new moon amazonite it's also a stone associated with the goddess as well. So there we go. And it helps you communicate your truth, which is really important and definitely needed. I might be grabbing onto that one a lot tonight. Um, aquamarine for emotional renewal, which, you know, cancer is ruled by the moon. 
um, which rules the tides, which rules our menstrual cycles, like literally everything. So, um, and with the cycles that it rules, um, a part of that is renewal, and that can only happen after um, certain things are um, ending. And um, so I just feel like this would be a really satisfying one to work with tonight, Aquamarine. It's the birthstone of um, anyone who's born in March as well. But yeah, emotional renewal. And then finally, um, Pink Opal. Um, this one's going to be really good for healing your heart. If you've been feeling um, any kind of resentment, which is, again, normal, like no judgment, like whatever you've been feeling, no judgment. But like this one really helps heal that resentment because um, feeling your emotions is the only way to heal them. But, you know, obviously transmutation um, is the gift that feeling your feelings allows you to do, to transmute the, the negative into positive by accepting. Accepting things heals them. Um, even, it doesn't mean you have to be happy, like, you don't have to be happy that you're feeling depressed, but by accepting that you're feeling that way, like, if you, say, if you were, um, it allows you to move on from it, um, by accepting that you feel depressed, it's like, then you then take action based on your true feelings and then move from one state to another. You can move up the emotional scale from there, but only when you start at a place where you're being real with yourself. So anyhow, those are the crystals that I'm going to be kind of working tonight with. And then as far as cards go, I definitely wanted to pull from the Modern Witch Tarot. I just kept seeing this one in my mind's eye. I really wanted to connect with that feminine energy, um, and I just really love these cards. So we're going to be using that tonight. Um, oh, and then this crystal too. I have to talk about that. And we'll also be pulling one from the Rumi Oracle because I just feel like this deck has been eerie when I've pulled it in my personal life and in um, cards on this channel. I've, I've pulled like a card here and there from this Oracle and every time it's been pretty pretty accurate so like well when I say pretty accurate I mean like eerily accurate so this one will end on that and then finally if you're um if you need a gentle stone to hold you through this new moon I highly recommend getting some honey calcite this actually heals the mother wound and um it's just so soothing like I used to put it on my stomach if my stomach hurt um, and it would, it would literally take, absorb the pain. So this is just one final crystal I highly recommend working with, honey calcite. It really does soothe and heal that wound because we all have this wounded relationship with, um, feeling our feelings. And I feel like that's probably a reason why there is a mental health crisis going on, you know? Um, there's a lot of crises going on in the world, but one of them is... So this will help you to feel the feelings and to heal that wound, that part of us that we're all working to heal um, and at different stages with in different ways. So that's that. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask you to roll your shoulders back. And thank you to all who joined. Um, close your eyes. And first, before we um, open the circle, I am going to rattle you. Um... This is a great way to move energy if you're feeling like energy is stuck. Um, you could use anything to rattle with. Like my teacher always says, even grab a bottle of vitamins. But I got this cute little rattle, and I rattle it over me all the time. So I'm going to rattle you real quick um, because I think my neighbors are outside. So I'm not going to... I saged in my story, but I don't know if I'm going to sage tonight. I might burn some Palo Santo, which I feel like you can burn with the window closed. Um, but sage, I like to have the window open, which I'm not sure I can do tonight. So here we go. Ready? Sure to get behind you too. That's where energy gets stuck. There you go. <laughs> so, hope you feel rattled now, and that breaks up the energy a little. 
And then I'm going to invite in um, positive spirits. This will also clear the energy, even if you have any bell. This one is so cool. It's from the Sage Goddess. It has a quartz point. I love it so much. All right. I feel like we're ready to go. All right, so with that, if you want to roll your shoulders back, call your energy into present time. And we're going to welcome in the guides and guardians of the four directions and the element of spirit. So here we go. Let me take off my, my slippers. <laughs> I welcome in the guides and guardians of the East. Guides and guardians of the East, tonight I welcome you into the circle to share with us any wisdom um, of how we can best use um, the change that's coming in to um, our advantage. Please show us the right doorways, the right people, the right circumstances that will help us um, enact change that will serve our highest good and the highest good of all. Um, Help us um, to point ourselves in a direction where we can live out our life purpose and allow us to open any windows that will bring in um, welcome to change. I welcome you into the circle with so much gratitude tonight. Guides and guardians of the South, element of fire. Tonight we connect in with you to feel our passion, our desires, um, what we want to see burned clean, and what we also want to call in through um, our creativity. Um, please guide us to be motivated by love and by um, desires that will serve our highest good and the highest good of all. We call you tonight to light our fire as we rise like the phoenix from the ashes, born again and ready to align to our deepest desires. I welcome you into the circle with so much gratitude. Guides and guardians of the West, element of water. Tonight is your night. Cancer is a water sign and um, ruled by the moon, which rules the tides of the ocean. Tonight, we ask that you flow into us um, divine feminine healing energies of emotional healing of all kinds. Please let us... Um, Please also help us call in energy streams of abundance, of love, and of compassion and mercy and grace for ourselves and all who reside on this planet at this time. Please help us find common ground in love. I welcome you into the circle with so much gratitude. Guides and guardians of the north, element of earth, thank you for helping us to plant seeds of intention tonight. Um, from a place of love and truth and a desire for peace. Um, please help us continue to um, grow and evolve um, with patience and grace into the highest versions of ourselves. I also welcome in any spirit guides of love and light, healed ancestors and the angels in the north. And I welcome in the wisdom of the trees of the earth itself. Thank you for being here in this reading. And show us how to ground in to the planet and how to heal it and its people. I welcome you into the circle with so much gratitude. And finally, I welcome in the element of spirit that rules synchronicity. Um, please align us to um, our destiny, our fate. Um, our magic remind us that we hold the magic um, that we can harness that magic and that we are powerful co-creators of our own reality and that if there's something we want to see changed we have the power to co-create with you spirit I welcome you into the circle with so much gratitude I welcome in all guides and guardians of love and light and nothing else and with that the circle is open Amen. Blessed be hard none, and it's done, and it's done, and it's done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Anna Ho, and so it is. All right. Okay. Whew, so I feel better already. Let's get some cards out, shall we, and see what's going on. Um, I thought of doing a couple different spreads. I kind of wanted to do 
um, a circle because to me that is the divine feminine. That is the representation of that. Don't really know if, um, if that's going to work with the cards, but we'll see what we can do. Let me see what happens here. I can give it a shot. All right, these are the two extra cards. Is this not the vibe or is this not the vibe? This is the extra card that comes with the deck. Everything is fine. <laughs> so turn her back. <laughs> She's on her phone. She's like, everything's fine. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it feels like that. <laughs> All right, and this is the Modern Witch Tarot for those who are wondering. Where did my black guy night go? There it is. Okay, I'm just going to run this over it real quick. And we will begin. All right. Dear God and Goddess, thank you for giving us um, the wisdom that we need tonight. Thank you for helping us to hear our own intuition and what it's trying to tell us right now. What do we need to know that we don't know now that will serve our highest good and the highest good of all? Thank you for giving us messages of the highest love, light, and truth that we can clearly hear and understand at this tumultuous time on our planet. Um, we ask for energies of peace and clarity um, to flow in. Give us the answers we need to live in love. Amen. Blessed be harm none. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Aho. And so it is. I don't know how many times I shuffle tonight. I want to say I'm gonna do two. Doesn't feel like enough though. Yeah, I'm gonna do two because I feel like that's good. I really want to connect into the energy of the high priestess. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna pull six or however many want to come out. Wow, interesting first card. The Ten of Cups. <laughs> okay. Well, it's interesting because, you know, there's so many people on the planet. And um, in a lot of ways, I feel like even in the darkest of moments, there's joy. And it's important to remember that. Um, so this is reminding us of a time of emotional fulfillment. Um where we felt like we had our happy ending or a happy beginning, however you see this. This is like emotional fulfillment, though, at its finest. Um, so I feel like this being the first card out is actually really hopeful because it's showing that this is possible, this emotional fulfillment. Um, and that we've done it before, so we'll do it again. That's kind of the vibes of that card on my initial take there. It's a powerful way to start reading. I was not expecting that. It's funny because, okay, so we have two Cups cards already. It is a Cancer um, New Moon. So Cups in the Tarot are associated with the water signs, um, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Um, they represent your emotional state. So um, in the recent past, it's really good energy. And I feel like, you know, um, again, time is happening simultaneously, but we just perceive it linearly, linear in a linear fashion. So I feel like the universe is wanting to remind us of like kind of sweet memories of the past and the good, because um, it just doesn't want the whole vibration of the planet to get too low. And this is this is sweet memories of the past. This is nostalgia. This is um, us remembering an earlier time and thinking back on it fondly. So, um, really interesting, really interesting energy in the past there. Let's see if I can make it go in a circle. I might put this little sphere in the middle to help me. Let me move this back to see if I can. Hold on one second. I just want you to be able to see the cards. So I'm going to try to do it in a circle. There we go. That's like a lot better. Okay. So let's see what else wants to come. Okay. Well, it felt like something else fell on the floor, but it didn't. All right. Interesting. Um, so it looks like it's in reverse, but I mean, I think it is supposed to be, um, but it also kind of is flowing with the circle. So we'll see. Um, so it's the two of pentacles we have next, but it's in reverse. Um, 
interesting. <laughs> so upright, the two of pentacles talks about us juggling our options. Um, we're in decision making mode and we're trying to weigh, uh, which one of these pentacles is going to come through and work for us. So in reverse, um, it could mean a bit of a surrender to me. Um, or maybe we've made the decision to me, um, or maybe we we just refuse to make it. So there, it could be a lot of things. Because what is the opposite of juggling your options? You know what I mean? It could be indecision, um, or it could be that a decision um, was made. You know what I mean? And we're not juggling anymore. Um, kind of feel like the word coming through is standstill though. So maybe we're at a standstill. So whether we're coming from a place of indecision or making a decision, now we feel like we're at a standstill um, because of a decision, which would make a lot of sense collectively. It's like, oh, what now? What now? What now? So it's kind of like the aftermath of making a decision or the aftermath of indecision, but I feel it more as like the standstill that comes of after a decision was made. So I think, yeah, I think collectively that's how it definitely makes sense. Let's see what else wants to come out. Okay, another six, interesting. That's two sixes now. Um, so we have the six of swords and this was definitely upright. Um, so this talks about um, moving out of a troubled state into calmer waters, as you can see when uh, his oar there is like, the water there is all choppy and rough and he's rowing to calmer shores. Um, it's not that everything is better yet, but six is all about bounce. So um, I feel like this is where we know we need to go. We need to relocate to calmer shores. Um, because the choppy water isn't getting us anywhere mentally. Um, and I love this card because it's, and it's air signs. So swords are related to the air element in the tarot and air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but also just like the element of air, which is usually talking about our mind, our mental thoughts, our mental state. But with the Six of Swords, the cool part about it is there's, it's usually always depicted as this, as somebody rowing towards calmer waters. And so the element of water is still there. Um, to me, it talks about moving into more of a heart space, even though it's a card dealing with the mind. Um, it's almost like the mind and heart talking to each other and realizing that there needs to be a calmness um, for there to be forward movement. It's almost like the calmness after a storm is kind of how this reading feels, even though the cards are so beautiful. And it does look really pretty, so I am going to keep it in like a semi-circle here. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to pull two more. We'll see what happens here. And definitely let me know your thoughts and feelings, too, um, about the cards. Oh, that one was weird. Whoa, too many. Let's see. Okay, Seven of Wands. <laughs> Interesting. So I guess we're taking the Two of Pentacles and the Six of Swords as the present. And so moving into the potential future, interesting energy to come out out of the Six of Swords. I feel like this is, like my spirit guides are talking here, the pendulum swinging back and forth. Um, it's like on one hand, we want to be calm, but when you call in an energy stream, there's always two sides of it. Because one of the hermetic principles of the universe is polarity. Um, so, really, an energy stream of love is also an energy stream of hate. It's like which side you choose to activate. And I feel like this energy stream is between feeling calm and feeling defensive of our opinions, of our beliefs, um, and standing up for what we believe in, which both are necessary, and like, just look at that. Look at that, them next to each other. It's like this, they're mirroring one another. Holy crap. That's really interesting. Um, 
I'm gonna try to get that as the free shot because this is really, this is really the energy right now. Um, both really, in my opinion, want peace. This person it has, is like having success, but it feels like they need to defend, I don't know. I feel like this person is trying to defend themselves and their beliefs and their values and their opinions. Um, yeah, and then this person is too, but kind of on a more interpersonal level. It's like, let me move out of these choppier waters. Like this feels like more like somebody kind of dealing with their own self first. Um, and I guess the battle that's being fought, so to speak, is the opinions of others still coming in and feeling like, I want my inner peace, but this one says that and that one says that, and I, I need to fight these people off because they don't agree with me. So it's like that kind of battle that's going on right now, which makes a lot of sense collectively. Really interesting. I might have to keep those two next to each other. Um, and then I'm going to pull one more card. How much I see here? Okay, that's what I'll do. Yeah, super interesting how they both aligned like that, though. All right. Oh, too many. Jeez. Uh, reversals. So tempted not to take reversals tonight, cause, but I already did. Okay, interesting, interesting. I feel like these cards don't really help us much, <laughs> but um, it's the King of Pentacles in reverse and the Knight of Wands in reverse. Um, so upright, the King of Pentacles talks about wealth, abundance. Um, being grounded, being stable, so there is a lack of stability right now. Um, and even though it can represent earth signs, um, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, I'm guessing this is like, because it's a collective reading, we're talking about collective energy. So there, this is kind of represents the instability factor. And the Knight of Wands, Wands are always, or um, Knights in the Terror are always messengers, and Wands talk about movement. So there's instability, but um, I don't want to say there's a lack of movement because I feel like that's not accurate, but um, a lack of knowing something. There's still a piece of the puzzle that, that we don't know. Um, probably what action to take because the ones are the action-oriented suite of the tarot. Um, and I think that we're still figuring that out. So right now it feels really unstable. <laughs> um, and it feels like we don't know what to do about it. Um, and I feel like we're a little bit at war of ourselves trying to figure out should we be defending what we think is right or should we just be like kind of taking it all more internal and moving towards our own calmer waters, relocating to where we're safe. And truthfully, I think both need to be addressed. Like, I do think we need to defend what we believe in, um, in our own way, but it starts with the internal landscape of your mind and moving to a place of calmness. Because if you're trying to get any sort of point across, um, that's the place you want to be coming from. So I think that's what the cards are trying to say. Let me see if I can get one more upright one and then I'm going to pull an oracle card and end it there. I always lose track of time once I start to channel. So hopefully this video isn't too long and that my Instagram decides to cooperate with me today because it really hasn't been. <laughs> um, I was wondering if it would even let me go live. <sighs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, interesting, interesting. So we got the High Priestess card. It is in reverse. I'm not gonna leave it in reverse because it came out like this and I almost just wanted to go like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, 
this is where the answers lie. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know, shit, right? <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing else you can say. But, because I was actually going to um, pull this card out and do a reading around it, um, but I feel like that's kind of legit what happened anyway, because I was going to put the last card in the center. Um, this is who we need to become, the High Priestess. Um, she is intuition. Um, she... She is intuition. That is what she is. She is the inner knowing, the inner wisdom that comes from connecting in with your higher self, um, which can never be separated from source energy, um, however you view that. So we need to tap into that divinity part of ourselves. Um, and that's something that we can't rely on other people to do. That that comes internally, like regardless of what's going on in our outer circumstances, it like all starts with connecting in with our own intuition. Um, I kind of want to see what the guidebook has to say about her tonight. Because I just feel like that's not enough. And it's funny, I, I took out my intuition bebop too. It says intuition from Sage Goddess, because that's what it's all about. You know, it's another sign or another card that's associated with Cancer and the Divine Feminine. Um, it's card two in the Major Arcana. Um, and, you know, the tarot is about the journey of the fool. Um, the fool's the card zero of the tarot, and he's on a quest. And first he meets the magician who shows him how to use his tools to manifest what he desires. Um, and then he meets the High Priestess. That is the second person the Fool meets. And she teaches the inner wisdom that comes from just your inner intuition alone and being in receptive mode, which is what Divine Feminine Wisdom is all about, receiving the answers from the universe. Um, that computer, it's like, you know, it's like <laughs> her little laptop that she's holding has like the Akashic records in it. You know what I mean? Her own lifetimes, everything is there. It's inside her. The wisdom is coming from within. Um, it's not out there. It's within her. So that's where this new moon is going to ask us to get really quiet and sit with our own inner wisdom, with our own thoughts and feelings, what our intuition is telling us that we know. Um, and that's where the answers, I feel like, lie. Just see what the guidebook has to say. I, I don't usually read the guidebook, but it doesn't feel like enough tonight, so. I'm gonna see what they have to say here. I don't always, yeah, sometimes I don't vibe with the guidebook, so sometimes I don't read it. Um, but let's see what she has to say. I have a feeling I will for this one. Okay, there are deep secrets and many mysteries in life. Truth? Uh, the High Priestess knows the path towards them. She sits on her throne with her laptop full of secret knowledge and wisdom, pensive but inviting. Behind her, a veil of pomegranate suggests desires, um, suggests the desires for the answers in there, but we may not be ready to lift the veil of mysteries. The moon at her feet seeks to waken our unconsciousness and opens us up to hidden things and the strangest parts of existing. Oh, well, that actually does definitely resonate. Be still. <laughs> Sometimes it is good to read the guidebook then again because it feels like a confirmation, and I like it. I do. That's one of the best uses of the tarot is the confirmation, the inner confirmation of usually what you already know, but sometimes you need to hear it again to kind of like really for it to set in, you know, sink in. Um, so be still. Sometimes the greatest power comes in knowing that you do not know anything. Really interesting. <laughs> You've come up against the truth that more self-knowledge is needed and it's time to reflect in order to grow. Explore your subconscious through meditation, through tarot itself, through study. It's not time to make big decisions right now. Wow, really interesting. Oof, so you're telling me we gotta let the energy unfold and go within. Yep, that's exactly what the tarot is saying because there's more information that we need to download. Um, so sometimes the best thing to do is to be still. And it's funny because if you go back in the reading, when we got the two pentacles I was talking about, 
things feeling like they're at a standstill. Um, the two of pentacles being in reverse. Um, it's like this decision was made. Of course, I mean, the only example I can think to use on a collective level is the Supreme Court decision. And it's like, what now? Maybe we don't know yet. <laughs> Maybe we don't know yet, but that's why we have to go within because there are the answers there. We just have to have to do that inner work first. Um, and there'll be a time when that inner work becomes outer work, you know, the seven of wands. Um, but we don't want to go and but we might be able to lessen the battle, so to speak, and make it more of a peaceful situation if we go within first. And I think that's what the cards are trying to tell us. So it's time to go within and get quiet, sit still, and see what comes through, which is exactly what we're all doing right now. And um, I appreciate it. And I needed to do it myself. Um, and I've been doing it myself all weekend. I haven't been on social media much. I've been like took a walk today and I was taking a walk with my mom but we weren't even really talking for most of it we were both in our thoughts and feelings and you know I said at the beginning I'll say it again this new moon is welcoming you to feel your thoughts and feelings because there's deep wisdom there the deepest um the call is coming from inside the house the call is coming from inside your heart and um it cannot lead you astray, but you have to connect in with it. And to do that um, requires getting still and getting quiet. So, um, yeah, so there we go. So um, the last thing I'm going to do is pull an oracle card from the Rumi Oracle. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to include it in the picture spread tonight or how I'm going to do this afterwards, but... This Rumi Oracle has really, really um, helped me um, and given me some powerful insight since I got it back in May. I don't know, May or April. I can't remember. haven't had it for very long, but it's just a beautiful deck. Highly, highly recommend it. It's by Alana Fairchild, and that's what it looks like, the cover there. And we're going to end it on that. I can't believe it's 8-12 already. All right, so here we go. Man, I've already gotten this card. <laughs> the right choice. Interesting. Oh, is it bad that I want to pull a different one? Because I don't understand. <laughs> Interesting. I can just, so it's funny. So the card we got was the right choice. I feel like the choice we're making is to sit, though. You know what I mean? Um, it's interesting, because I pulled this card once before, and it was when I had to leave a job. Um, and I literally got the right choice card, and it was like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I pulled it for myself, personally, not on the channel. But, um, so... This could be taken so many different ways, but let me read read what it says here. Oof, I'm feeling so much resistance. Is this the card that was meant to pop out? Yeah. Hmm. I just want to see something real quick here. <laughs> this is Iolite. This is a really good stone for channeling. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I could sit here and channel for a while because. Okay. Interesting. Sometimes I get like a little flash of a vision or whatnot. Um, 
but I got a message and then the message was the temperature needs to be cooler to make a decision. So I think the right choice will come after reflection and again people and a, and a state of calmness. So that's what I got from that. All right, so let me read this to you and then we'll close out the reading. Let me see if I can put this up somewhere so you can see it as I read. So interesting, man. Never a dull moment. Well, your intuition is always gonna lead you to the right choice for yourself. Okay, so I think it was number 29. All right. Stay close to those who know about the heart. Choose the shade of a tree that is in constant bloom. Don't meander aimlessly among the herb sellers and the potion vendors. Go directly to the shop that sells nothing but sweets. Don't sit waiting by every boiled pot to have your plate filled. Not every boiling pot is cooking what you want. Not every sugar cane is filled with sugar. Not every down has an up. Not every eye has a vision. Not every sea contains pearls. Rumi. And then it says, Within you I recognize my most trusted friend. Ah, we go back a long way to before the moment when time began. We knew each other then, even before time was born. So I say, hello, my old and dear friend. So lovely for us to meet again. And I feel how your heart responds with a wave of love. For it is love that is you, my most trusted friend. On the path of love, there is not so much wrong and right in the moral sense, so much as what is wrong or right for you. The mind cannot help so much here. Only the heart can speak such truths. The mind may reject it, recoil, analyze, and find all the reasons why the simple truth, the right choice of the heart, cannot possibly work and only lead to pain. That is what the mind does rather well, actually. But it doesn't mean the right choice, the heart choice, becomes incorrect. It means, rather, that the heart has outsmarted the mind, and the mind will need to bow to the heart, even without understanding its sometimes imp impenetrable mysteries. Or one can choose to say in inner conflict, fighting against the right choice, but eventually love will prevail, and the way forward must be taken. So you can give up what you have planned, believed, or decided. Let the heart wisdom that silently and constantly broadcasts its pure and and true intention into the fertile womb of the universe lead the way instead. It will lead you along the right path to the right house where sits the right master for you. He grabs you in a bear hug and gently whispers into your ear, what took you so long? I've been waiting for you since the day you were born. Now we're together, it's time for us to play. It is said that one man's meat is another man's poison. Sounds like choice, doesn't it? The right choice. I'm beginning to realize the word choice <laughs> is strongly in there. Uh, right choice for you. Okay. It is said that one man's meat is another man's poison. To base your choices on what others have chosen for themselves may end up killing you. Oh, wow. Better to take your risks on the angel of your own... Better to take your risks on the angel of your own heart, wise as that being is, and dance to your own heart rhythm instead. There may be fear if others seem to be dancing different steps, but beloved, you know that is just because every heart has its own unique rhythm, and yours doesn't want to waltz so much as to tango. So why not allow it to be thus, without fear or doubt? This oracle comes with a message for you. In your heart, you know what uh, holds meaning for you. You may or may not have a grand vision to go along with that meaning as yet. But deep within, you know what it is with but deep within, you know what is and sorry, but deep within, you know what is without value and what holds value for you. You are born with those values intact in your heart, and whatever confusion has arisen for you along the way 
It's just where the values of others have transfused into your own blood. It's time for a transfusion of holy light into that blood to be cleansed and purified, restored to its integrity, and filled with passion for what is rightfully yours, your unique passion and purpose. If you've been concerned about your path and what steps to take next, this oracle comes as an omen of good things headed your way. Clarity, reassurance, truth, and revelation. Don't hone on to a belief system or vision if it appears to be tossed on its head. Let things go the way they will and good fortune will prevail for you. This vision might actually have been upside down all this time and suddenly able to right itself and be born for you if allowed to topple. So this is about tearing down, well, letting what's not working fall away for you. Um, letting things that aren't working end, releasing them, which is what new moons are all about, as well as setting intentions. So we're releasing what, what isn't working for us. Or perhaps there's a more fulfilling version of your vision lurking in its remnants to be scooped up by your soul with its hawk vision and eagle deafness. Trust that if you are being drawn away from a tantalizing sweet shop, there is a more delicious array of confection just around the corner for you. So yes, have your tantrum if you must, but you will be sheepish soon when you realize the hand of the great beloved that removes is the same hand that bestows even greater gifts. And then it says, Sacred Honoring Ritual. Turn the palms of your hand down toward the earth. Say out loud, With gratitude and trust, I release that which is not rightfully mine. Open your hands upwards towards the sky. Say out loud, I give thanks for the grace that is bestowed upon me now as I accept my rightful divine inheritance. Stand with your hands in prayer at your heart and say out loud, I honor my heart wisdom. May my heart always be le my leading light, showing me the way of grace, so be it. You have completed your honoring ritual. Interesting. Really interesting. You know what I think that is a beautiful way of saying? Follow your heart. Um, you've got to make the right choices for you. And um, when you get still enough, you can hear what your heart is saying so time to get still and time to follow your heart you know what i mean um it is never going to lead you astray so i think that's the wisdom here for us tonight and um i'm gonna leave it at that because i feel like the my own need to like just sit with all of that because it's a lot but um let me release the guides and guardians of the five directions and thanks so much for joining me i'm going to try to put this into a post um sometimes it's challenging it's easier to do the videos so definitely let me know what you like what you prefer i almost even thought about doing a reel tonight but there just seemed to be too much to say and sometimes i just like to sit with the questions um sitting with things is always a good valuable I think, um, way to reflect on something. Like, you gotta sit with it. You can't just, I feel like the cards are definitely saying this is not a time to be impulsive. This is a time to go within and just really hear what your heart is saying. So, I'm wishing you the best of luck this Cancer New Moon. Don't be afraid to feel the feelings because they are your answer. So, with that, I'm going to release the guides and guardians, and thank you so much for being here. All right. Here we go. I release the guides and guardians of the spirit element. Thank you for being here tonight to remind us that magic is real. Thank you for continuing to hold us as we go through this next lunar cycle. Thank you for showing us synchronicities and aligning us to um, things that will serve our highest good and showing us that um, you have our back and that magic is real and that we are always held by the Cosmic Mother. I release you from the circle with so much gratitude. Guides and guardians of the North, element of Earth, thank you for continuing um, to allow us to walk patiently and steadily forward with purpose. Um, thank you for giving us the time to be patient with ourselves so that we may know our purpose as we walk forward. I release you from the circle with so much gratitude. 
guides and guardians of the west element of water, thank you for showing up tonight to show us, um, as you did in the first two cards tonight, that emotional fulfillment is possible and to remind ourselves of um, the good things when life is hard because um, the wheel is ever changing and change is the only thing, the wheel is ever turning and change is the only thing that remains constant. And bad days will turn into good. It's just a universal law. Continue to flow into us energy streams of mercy, compassion, love, and grace for all, um, including ourselves. I release you from the circle with so much gratitude. Guides and guardians of the south, element of fire. Um, thank you for guiding our actions um, in a way that serves the light, um, the goodness in us, the best in us. Allow us to release and burn clean all that no longer serves so that we may come at things from a clean slate um, as we allow metamorphosis to occur. Um, thank you for letting us realize what lights us up in a creative and passionate way and how we can best use those creative passions and desires um, as an outlet to benefit ourselves and society as a whole, or at least you from the circle with so much um, gratitude. And finally, I release the guides and guardians of the East, element of air. Thank you for continuing to point us in the right direction, for blowing in change that will serve our highest good and the highest good of all, for speaking to us clearly so that we may know the answers of our own heart and our own mind and align um, our mind with our hearts. Um, I release you from the circle with so much gratitude. I release all guides and guardians of love and light. And with that, the circle is closed. Amen, blessed be, harm none. It is done, it is done, it is done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm at a hoe and so it is. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And I hope this posts live. So, um... You can watch it again if you need to. And seriously, do take care of yourselves, love one another, and listen to your heart. You know what's right for you. The choice is yours.